Testing out your paint personalities is one of the most beneficial exercises any artist can do. I used to do this a lot more informally on random scrap pieces of canvas or panels around my studio, but I found that it was so beneficial I decided to do a more structured version of it. And that's when I started getting these Color Frontier panels that have the sticker grids on them. They're very satisfying to take the stickers off at the end, but they're also just a nice way to stay organized. These color charts are very helpful, not only so I can test out an individual paint, but I can also compare them. In this case, I'm trying out Michael Harding's Cobalt Blue. I used to use Gamblin's Cobalt Blue, but I wasn't a huge fan of its consistency. So I got a different brand, and now I'm trying this out to see how it compares both in consistency, but also in the hue value chroma, and also its glazing capabilities, and how it mixes with white. The first square is going to be fully opaque paint direct out of the tube. So I'm not adding any medium to this, and usually a single brush load is not gonna be enough. I'm really putting a lot of paint down. You wanna make sure you're getting full opacity and zero transparency. In the second square, we're gonna be looking for a little bit of transparency. So at first, I'm not gonna use any additional oil added. I'm just gonna use the straight paint and see if I can spread it a little bit thinner to get transparency. As you can see, it's a little dry. It's not working really well as just scrubbing it on the square. So I will add a little bit of oil just to encourage some transparency. With the extra oil, it goes down much nicer and it's able to get kind of a glazed transparency. I'm not trying to go as thin as possible yet. This is just kind of a medium transparency. And the third square is the maximum transparency that I can get out of this paint without the paint looking splotchy or a little too weak. So this is gonna be the maximum chroma that this paint is capable of because it's glazed over white. This fourth square is a way for me to find out how this paint is going to act in mixtures. Before this goes on to the color chart, I'm gonna take a palette knife and mix up my white with the color. And I'm going for a very light value, so it's going to allow me to see how chroma holds up in very light mixtures. The application for this has to be fully opaque. There should be no variations within the application, so you reload your brush a couple times to really make sure you put down a fully opaque statement of this white mixture. And this last square is very similar to the last one, except we have more pigment involved. So we're going for more of a mid-tone value where maybe white is not the majority of the mixture, but maybe it's more of a half and half. And I'm trying to see, again, how the chroma holds up and also how strong the pigment is as a tinting strength. Is it weak or is it a bully? And last but not least, it is oh so satisfying to pull that sticker off.